My name is Rachel. I actually grew up in this church, so I've been like coming to this church since not when I was born, because I was born on Christmas Day up in Aberdeen where my grandma lives, but I was raised in this church, so pretty much like the rest of the time. <laughs> but um, anyway, and there were six of us kids, and we always sat over here. Well, there was pews. But anyway, um, I was just going to share um, that I just went on a three-week kind of, I don't know if I want to call it a tour. It really wasn't. It was just kind of like uh, being a good traveler with Adonai with the Lord, and I went on a um, women's retreat first in North Carolina at Moravian Falls. Um, we, I stayed in the, this lodge with 33 other women, and it was a lodge, I don't know if you've heard of Bob Jones, um, he was a, a made, like a prophet in the last, I don't know, maybe, I think he passed away, but he, he has a lot of prophecies that came out, but they, him and some other um, prophets met in the basement of this, this huge lodge that we stayed in, and when you walk down into the basement where they would pray, they would meet there and pray like every year to get the word of the Lord. There was just like this holy like hush, like this, it was just, I mean, I'm feeling it right now just, and I don't know if you can, but I'll just try to spread that all around here, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but we just got to soak in the presence of the Lord and just like hear from the Lord. We just kind of like all these women, we were just like, kind of like just worshiping the Lord and um, dancing. Some of them had flags and and we were just like, I was on my face, you know, just crying and, and just being with the Lord. And we were just all together there. Um, we had a feast for Rosh Hashanah, which is a Jewish uh, feast. And I actually ended up buying like a lot of stuff for the feast. So I got to cook, which is really fun for me because I love to cook. Um, and so we had a miracle. Um, with the two lamb roasts that that we bought, I, we cooked it for two hours. It still wasn't done, and we were about to go blow the shofars at sundown and then have the feast. And the and the lambs were not done; they were raw, and the even the potatoes were raw that we had put in. And we were like poking them. The the thermometers didn't come out. And in my heart, like I didn't even pray. In my heart, I was thinking, "Oh Lord, you could cook these for us." Like. But my friend Michelle, who was helping me, her and I were like, okay, we're going to put one in the microwave. We're going to boil one. You know, we're going to like try to zap these roasts, you know, get them, get them cooked really fast. Well, so she grabbed hers to put, put hers in the microwave and I was going to put mine in a, in a, um, in a boiling pot <laughs> and, um, her thermometer popped up and we were like, okay, that's weird. And I was like, uh, and so then I checked the potatoes again. The potatoes were done. We're like, let's check these. We, they were both done. They were both the roasts were, were done. We had a miracle. <laughs> so like, gee, like, like I said, I didn't even pray, but like Jesus, like cooked the lambs, lamb roast for us. Um, we all went out on the balcony, blew our shofars. I think it's a hundred blasts or something. I don't know if we got that many blasts. I personally didn't have my shofar, but I was just kind of like, actually doing a live so if you want to go to my facebook page you can see the shenanigans and the big celebration we had <laughs> um anyway so anyway from um so i stayed in meridian falls for the weekend then i went down to houston texas uh to joan hunter uh ministries it's down in houston texas i was ordained through her last a, a year ago september and my aunt celestine um, she actually was getting ordained this year. So I went to be with her and then I was one of the people that were up there praying with Joan and I saw quite a few miracles myself. I'm still getting reports. Um, there's a girl, she just like was completely set free. Um, she's still writing us like I'm, she just is like set free of depression. Um, just a lot of inner healing with her. Um, I'm trying to remember because after Houston, so I stayed there for nine days, then I ended up, I was supposed to go to Bethel in California, but something came up in Florida and I just thought that might be a little more fun. <laughs> so I actually switched my trip to um, Florida and Joan Hunter was also going there. She said, hey, why don't you minister with me a couple extra days in Florida? Um, so I actually went to 
it's it was a conference called if my people so it was a prayer conference that was kind of spontaneous but like benny hen suzanne hen his wife um trying to think of all the people that were there um uh robert uh henderson um i don't know but anyway it was just like all of us i mean i was there rachel mcmahon was there too (laughs) (laughs) and uh we all just were like praying for the president and then we were like uh it was in orlando florida we prayed for the president we prayed for the country um we actually went to the courts of heaven took authority over some of the principalities that are you know have been trying to rule this nation we had some revelation about that and so we specifically took authority over uh, the the roaring lion from uh it's like first timothy first peter that sort of thing that's like kind of takes over like judicial systems and things like that um we prayed against that um and joan hunter she she one of her prayers was like for families and for for couples to like quit striving and like come back together families to come back together um and then uh two days after that i with joan hunter we went to another church and after she present she she does a lot of like healing miracles um that sort of teaching and training a lot of like um on cellular levels inner healing um and so then after her president you know after the service then i'm one of like her prayer team on her prayer team so from that um there was like this couple that we're gonna I, i got information to like follow up with them because they were like they want to get a house, they want to have a baby, things like that. Those are the things I prayed for them. And like, even the mother, the mother was like, oh, I'm so glad they prayed for you. And I want to, you know, I want to tell you when they have their miracles. And so we're like all just so excited for them and just hopeful for all the miracles that are going to happen in their life. And, um, and then, yeah, so then I decided to come back. I finally bought a ticket to come back home. (laughs) Yay. Yeah. Hello, I'm back. <laughs> so yeah, so um, it was just, it was good. It was like, it's just good to just see the Lord working. I had never been to Florida before. Um, so that was just so much fun. And I mean, it is, it's good to be home. And it's just like, I'm here this morning. And it's just, I'm so reminded that I'm just, my roots are here, you know, my foundation and, it, and, and you all know, like the people that do know me know, like my humble beginnings and just the confidence that God has grown in me just through his love. And that's what's shining through. You know, it's like I'm glorifying God and it's his confidence through me. And um, anyway, <laughs> if you if anybody needs healing as well, like I would love to pray for you um, just, you know, under the pastor's. <laughs> permission and and the covering here at the church but um so it just i have a passion for that for seeing people healed set free delivered and just completely you know um sanctified in the blood of jesus so yeah amen yeah amen yeah amen praise god (laughs) amen So I'm talking about, I'm doing a little, uh, little series on reset, and I believe that our, our nation right now is in a reset. And um, Psalm 2, 1 through 3, it's not on the overhead, you'll just have to look, it's not in the projector, but um, why do the nations conspire and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers together against the Lord, against the anointed one. Let us break their chains, they say, and throw off their fetters. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. And then he rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath. I have installed my king on Zion on my holy hill. And then Genesis 1, 1 and 2 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness, 
uh, was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Let's pray. Father God, we just ask that you would bless the reading and the preaching of your word today. Let there be an open heaven between you and these people. And God, I just ask that you would anoint this message this morning. And Father, by the end of the service, may every person be able to say it has been well, it has been good to be in the house of the Lord. And so, Father, I just ask that you would hide me behind the cross. And Lord, that whatever is said here today, God, may it be from you and not from me. So, Lord, we just ask that you would bless this word and open their ears and open their eyes that they might hear and see spiritually today. In your name we pray. Amen. I've got a simple message, and I just have an introduction here that is not up on the uh, PowerPoint. But um, the reason I read those two scriptures here, Psalms uh, 2, 1, and through 3, uh, especially verse 4 uh, of, of Psalm 2, it says, The Lord laughs, the Lord scoffs. I think there's a lot of people right now that are planning some terrible things for this country, but God's up in heaven just laughing. And, uh, you know, the thing is, is that the world started off as chaos. That Hebrew word there is, is talking about in the beginning, that things were chaotic. And what is the one thing that God does? He always brings order to chaos. Anybody ever, ever been living a chaotic life and Jesus brought order to your life? Amen. So, here's the, here's the thing. Satan brings disorder to put us under bondage jesus brings order to give us liberty galatians 5 1 through 5 and uh, uh, joanna's word was right on this morning stand fast therefore in the liberty wherein christ has made us free do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage uh for those that uh can't translate the King James. The NIV says, For it is freedom that Christ has given us and set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Once Jesus has set you free, don't go back into the waller of sin. Praise God. So, I've got a series here that I've we've uh, just kind of felt like the Lord was laying on my heart. I believe that America is kind of at a, at a reset. Uh, America is at a spiritual, political, and cultural reset. The question is, is which way will it, the reset go? Will the reset go to revival and renewal, or will it reset to judgment on America and see financial and social collapse? I believe that God wants to bring us revival. The choice is up to the church on how we respond in the next few weeks. And I believe that there is a tremendous amount of prayer that's been happening through the month of September. And I say, keep it coming. Just put your foot on the gas and keep it coming. Um, the big idea of this whole series is this. The first push in a reset is to bring Jesus back into the house. What does it take to bring Jesus back into our house, our churches, and our homes? When Jesus is in the house, the people will gather in the kingdom ministry will overwhelm us with an abundant harvest. The prayer strategy for October, if you look at this, um, I just felt, uh, you know, just here's a little prayer agenda. If you don't know what to pray this next uh, month, uh, pray this. Put it in your Bible and, and, and pray it every day. Um, sing a song, sing some worship, do some, ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Humble yourself, uh, 2 Chronicles 7, 13. And then prayer for leaders. Uh, 1 Timothy 2, 1, I, I liked it out of the uh, New Living Translation. Uh, I urge, first of all, that prayer for all people. Ask, uh, ask God for help. Uh, excuse me, help me to read. I, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people, ask God to help them, intercede on their behalf, give thanks for them, pray in this way for kings and all those in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by the godliness and dignity. 
And I want you to pray for President Trump and his administration. Um, this verse, uh, Deuteronomy 28, 7, in fact, the first part of Deuteronomy 28, the Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in how many? Seven. And uh, Deuteronomy uh, 28, 13, the Lord will make you the head, not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God, and I give you this day and carefully follow him, you will always be on the top and never on the bottom. How many can say, praise God for that? I want to be, how many want to be the tail? How many want to be the head? All right. How many want to be on the bottom? How many want to be on top? Amen. I'm in the right church, Joseph. All right. So, you want to be on top or bottom? Oh, <laughs> all right. We're praying for you after the service. All right. So, uh, Daniel 7 21, as I watched, this horn was waging war against the uh, saints and defeating them until the Ancient of Days came and pronounced judgment in favor of the saints. We need judgment in favor of the saints and the Most High. And the time came and they possessed the kingdom. Amen. And then I want you especially to start praying even now because Amy Coney Barrett is going for a confirmation this week for the Supreme Court. And uh, she's a spirit-filled Catholic. And, and this verse came to mind. If you remain silent, Esther 4.14, if you remain silent at this time, uh, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but you have come to a royal position for such a time as this. God is involved in all the events in this world in order to save his people from its evil and to accomplish his redemptive purposes on their behalf. All believers must remember that God is working in what happens around us in order to rescue us from this present evil and to bring us to be with him forever. I believe that God has placed Amy Coney Barrett, Judge Amy Barrett, to be on the Supreme Court at this time because I am praying that God, I, I, want, I want Roe v. Wade to be reversed. That scourge would be removed from this land. And you know what happened to Brett Kavanaugh. You saw how they treated him. And, uh, you know, um, just, uh, well, I'm, I'm praying that, uh, that everything that they say uh, would just fall flat on, its, on, its, on the ground. Remember when I preached on Samuel here a few uh, <clears throat> a couple of months ago, one of the first things, and I, I, I spoke on prophecy. And one of the things about Samuel was that uh, it said that um, he, every, his, all the other prophecies uh, like fell on the ground, but Samuel's had power to it, and it was fulfilled. And that's what we want to have happen with and the words that Amy says. And we want the words that everybody else says, all these slanderous lies and stuff like that, that they're going to, then they're going to drag up terrible stuff. And uh, we're going to pray that they all flat, just fall on the ground. Praise God. So, um, the U.S. Senate, pray this, that God would raise up capable men. Uh, men who fear God, who are trustworthy and hate dishonest gain, the House and the Senate during this election. I tell you what, you know what our scourge is right now? We have men and women that are voted into office that are using their office to get rich. So we want 
capable men and women. We want people who fear God, who are trustworthy, and hate dishonest gain. And we don't care if they're a Democrat or a Republican, just as long as they vote right. <laughs> and then, I, you know, a few, a few weeks ago, I was so frustrated with the governors here on the West Coast, with Kate Brown, with Jay Inslee, and uh, what's that? Oh, Gavin Newsom. Yes, nuisance. I mean, Newsom. <laughs> and please put that all over Facebook. And yesterday, or Friday, um, I opened up my Bible, and I was just thinking, God, what, what could we pray about the governor? And I looked at Isaiah chapter 3. It just happened to open up there, and this jumped out at me. I will make boys their official mirror. Children will govern them. People will oppress each other. Men against man, neighbor against neighbor. The young will rise up against the old, and the base against the honorable. And I, a few weeks ago, I had actually said, you know what? I, I, we are being ruled by children. Yeah, we're being ruled by children. And you know what that is? It is, it is judgment beginning to come on our nation. When, when we have leaders that act more like children, we are in trouble. What we need is we need God to rescue us and save us. We need to repent and ask God that, Lord, we're, we're asking. Even if you read the book of um, Jeremiah, even right up to the last before the Babylonians came and tore down the wall and burned and killed everybody inside, there was a point where the Lord said, if you would just come to me now, and, and a lot of we're coming to the Lord right now. Let's keep coming to Him. Lord, pray, pray for Kate Brown that she'd no longer act like a child. And Jay Inslee, because i got to live over in Washington. And I own a house in California. The Gavin News. I mean, this is ridiculous. If you're down in California, you go out to eat, you have to wear a mask the whole time you're eating. In between bites. In between bites. Yes, you know, the, the greatest chance of you getting coronavirus is putting on and off your mask. Yeah, you don't need to wear masks anymore. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Just pull your mask up, wipe your face. <laughs> that is, I tell you, we are being led by children. I'm not even preaching yet. Um, uh, pray, pray for the Oregon legislature and pray for the Oregon senators that they get saved. <laughs> pray for our representatives that they get saved. Uh, pray for uh, whatever town you live in, Warrington, Astoria, Nacell, where, uh, where, Hammond. Hammond have a Hammond have a mayor? Tom, you're in a different spot. You're in the wife's spot. Oh, oh okay. All right. Pray for uh, pray for the police. Pray for our police chief, Jeff Spaulding here in Astoria. Uh, pray for the city council. Pray for the mayors. And uh, pray for churches. Pray for churches. And then, uh, you know, uh, in every place of worship, I want to pray uh, with holy hands lifted up, free from anger and controversy. Pray that the church would have a strong backbone, that they not be like the German church when Hitler was taken over, and they, they just, you know, well, we're, we're not going to say anything. Um, pray for a great harvest and uh, salvations and baptisms. Uh, and then uh, pray that on November 3rd that for corruption would, you know, before then would be exposed in churches, government, and voter fraud stopped. You know, uh, maybe some of you should probably call the county clerk and say, hey, you know, we've, we've heard that in, you know, homes where there's, uh, you know, like nursing homes and, um, 
you know, uh, homes that uh, take care of special needs kids and, and adults and stuff. We heard that you guys are voting for. There, there's somebody that's voting for them. We want that stopped. We want that stopped. And maybe we should tell them we're watching them. And um, I know probably two or three um, nonprofit legal uh, foundations that work in just cases like that. And tell them, say, well, we could sick some lawyers on you if you don't behave. I'm serious. Um, and then I thought this, um, I think Janice found this verse, and I think it's perfect. Psalm 140 is a great, uh, is a great chapter. But you know, what's going to happen after the election? There's going to be, you know, Antifa, hashtag BLM, socialist, anarchist, Marxist. We're, pray that they would fail. And, uh, 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 and Psalm 140 says, save us from evil, violent men and their plans. So pray this, Psalm 140, in verses 6 and 8, uh, and pray, pray the whole chapter. O Lord, I say to you, you are my God. Hear, O Lord, my cry for mercy, O sovereign Lord. My strong deliverer who shields my head in the day of battle, do not grant the wicked their desires, O Lord. And do not uh, let their plans succeed or let them become proud. Or they will become proud. I just think that, you know, it's not, it's not that I'm against, um, like I said, it's not, it's not a matter of being Republican or Democrat. It's a matter of voting our kingdom values. Our kingdom values. So, take your Bibles. That was my introduction. Mark 3, 20. I found this in my devotions the other day, and just this one little verse uh, just really stuck out, uh, uh, stood out to me. And uh, in fact, you could take uh, Matthew chapter 13, put, put a bookmark there, because that's basically, I'm preaching out of the, the kingdom parables of Matthew chapter 13. But I'm starting off here. And it says that one time, Jesus entered a house, and the crowds began to gather again. And soon, he and his disciples couldn't even find time to eat. Here's point number one. Jesus entered a house. Jesus entered a house. You want Jesus in this house? Amen. Uh, here's letter A is this. This house should pay any price to have Jesus. We need to pay any price to have Jesus in this house. There is, uh, if you flip over to Matthew 13 and uh, verse 44, there is a, a parable that talks about this. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man had discovered hidden in a field. And in his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Here's the point is that uh, Peter said, Lord, you know what? After the rich young ruler came, he said, Lord, we, we've given up everything to follow you. And Jesus said, you know what? You're going to be rewarded. Those who make Jesus Lord and Savior they, you have to pay the price to get Jesus in your house, into this house. You have to pay the price to get Jesus into the house. And what does that mean? It means giving up everything. But it is worth it. Because if <clears throat> this parable talks about, it says, there was a guy and he, he found a treasure. And what did he do? He buried the treasure and he thought, you know what? The owner of this property doesn't know what he has. I'm going to go take everything that I have and sell it so that I can buy it and have a treasure that is far more valuable than everything that I own. There's another similar parable. We call it the parable of the, the pearl of great price. 
Letter B says, to Jesus, you are the pearl of great price. Listen to this. Hear it clearly. This works both ways. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. You should never have any low self-esteem ever. Because Jesus, Jesus, God the Father, gave up everything. He gave up His only Son just to redeem you. You need to give up everything to get into the kingdom because Jesus gave up everything to get you into the kingdom. What does this mean to me? Number two, crowds began to gather again. Crowds began to gather again. And I thought, you know, over, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about this stupid, dumb, uh, you know, coronavirus and all this, you know, the masks and the whole thing. And I go, man, Lord, we, we, need, we need to do ministry. We need to do, you know, start getting people in this church. And when I saw this verse, this is what, this is what God spoke to me. The most important thing is, is to get Jesus in the house. And when you get Jesus in the house, the people will come. You read the, the Gospels, and what it happens is wherever Jesus was, there were, there were, what, just a handful of people. No, there were multitudes. Multitudes of people. The kingdom power brings kingdom growth. Verse 31 and 32 of Matthew chapter 13. Here's another illustration Jesus said. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed planted in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of garden plants. It grows into a tree and birds come and make it and make and make its nest in its branches. Um, Jesus said, I will draw all men unto me. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. When the kingdom of God begins to manifest and establish, people will be here. Amen? Amen. We start seeing healings. We start seeing miracles. We, see, we start seeing people delivered. People are going to show up and say, what do you got in the water over there? <laughs> if we lift up Jesus, Jesus will draw them in. The second letter B is this. Kingdom power starts small, but it infects all. Here's another Jesus used also this illustration, verse 33. It's the same, basically the same uh, meaning of the parable. The kingdom of heaven is like uh, the yeast a woman used in making bread, even though she put only a little yeast in three measures of flour. It permeated uh, every part of the dough. You know what? Your righteousness causes other people to make choices about Jesus. Um, I remember in junior high, I, I, I led a guy to uh, the Lord that, uh, you know, became my best friend. And we were in, um, uh, he used to, oh, he, he, I won't say his name because every time I tell this story, he just, oh, Nick, don't tell that story. But in junior high, I had to wear glasses for a little bit until I got contacts. Now I'm too old to wear contacts, so I'm just, I just wear glasses. But he used to, he used to put spit on his hand and, and rub them on my glasses. <laughs> he was just, I mean, he was, he was just like, he was just ornery, you know. But um, 
we we had a English class together, Mrs. Lober's English class, and uh, he he sat next to me on the desk. You know, they had this desk thing, and you had to sit with somebody, and so he sat with me. And during English, he started asking me questions about Jesus. And one day, uh, he shows up, and we had band together. And he goes, I did it. I said, what'd you do? He said, I prayed that prayer. I said, what prayer? You know that prayer. <laughs> and he said, I, I, I felt so clean. It was like, uh, just like a, a ton of bricks were taken off of me. And I felt so pure and so clean. If you are righteous, if you have the yeast of the kingdom within you, it, it causes people to make choices about Jesus. And you wonder why you're persecuted? It's because it is the Spirit of God within you that is causing them to make a choice about Jesus. And sometimes they don't want to make the right choice but pray for them they'll come around what does this mean about ministry number three is this they couldn't even find time letter a is this is uh, we must work for Satan is working. There's two parables that have basically the same meaning, and every parable has just one meaning. Here is another story Jesus told. This is verse 24. It says, The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field, but that night, as the worker slept, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat, then slipped away. When the crops begin to grow and produce grain, the weeds also grew. The farmers, workers uh, went to him and said, Sir, the field where you planted that good seed is full of weeds. Where did it come from? And he replied, An enemy has done this, the farmer exclaimed. Should we pull the weeds, they asked. No, he replied, you'll uproot the wheat if you do. Let them both grow together until the harvest and then I will uh, tell the harvesters to sort out the weeds, tie them in bundles, and burn them, and put the wheat in the barn. All right? We don't want to be a weed. We want to be a wheat, and we want to be put in the barn. So, uh, here's the thing is, you never hit a point where you're coasting in life for God. Anybody ever get a chance to coast? No. You know why? Because Satan is constantly opposing God's kingdom. Here's letter B. Be a fisherman for judgment, fisher of men, for judgment is coming. Some of you fishermen just got really excited when I misquoted that. Be a fisher of men, for judgment is coming. Verse 47 says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a fishing net that was thrown into the water and caught fish of every kind. And when the net was full, they dragged it up on the shore and sat down and sorted the good fish into crates and threw the bad ones away. That is the way it will be at the end of the world. Angels, the angels will come and separate the wicked people from the righteous throwing the wicked into the fiery furnace, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do you understand these things? And yes, they said, we do. Here's, here's, here's my just a couple little points under this. Making disciples is our business. We want to get people saved and baptized in water. We want to get them anointed, baptized in the Holy Spirit. We want to get them healed emotionally and physically, and we want to get them delivered financially and spiritually so what do i need to remember this last little parable that jesus had in um, verse 52 
Then he added, every teacher of religious law who becomes a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like a homeowner who brings from his storehouse new gems of truth as well as old. Here's the thing. Jesus is calling young and old. This is what you need to remember today. Jesus is calling both young and old. In these last days, Jesus is using all generations. Uh, George loaned me a book uh, by uh, Jeremiah Johnson. And in that book, it blessed my heart. He, he said that, uh, uh, that the Lord told him, I guess in a dream or prophetic word, that, uh, you know, uh, that this revival is on the shoulders of baby boomers, that God hasn't forgotten baby boomers. All of us baby boomers say, praise God. The rest of you will get you saved. So, you know, uh, for all you youngsters, uh, honor your elders. You need their wisdom. And uh, push the kingdom forward because you've got the energy. Right? In these last days, new and old, we need, we need to use the new and the old wisdom. What does that mean? Use the Old Testament. Use the, uh, the New Testament. Use the, uh, the epistles. Use the gospels. Use the new revelation and use the old w- revelation. Be wise disciples and use all the resources that Jesus has made available to you. Amen? What's the Holy Spirit saying to you? You have Jesus in the house? If you get Jesus in the house... People will come. Crowds will begin to gather. And we'll be so busy, we won't even have time to eat. I know you're thinking, well, that doesn't sound very good. (laughs) But uh, some of us, it probably wouldn't hurt. (laughs) Is Jesus in the house? How many want to see Jesus in this house? Amen. Amen. If we have Jesus in this house, everything will go better. Amen. God wants to use the young and the old. He wants the new he wants to he wants to use the new revelation and the old revelation. He wants to use the old testament. He wants to use the new testament. He wants to use all of these things. So at the end of this service, we're gonna pray specific for the Minnesota Vikings because they play the Seahawks tonight. We're going to pray. We're going to pray for Steve that he be delivered. He wore his purple and gold today. So uh, I have my Seahawk underwear on, but you can't look at it. So <laughs> uh, we're going to go uh, after the service. Janice and I, uh, we have to run back to um, we're going to grab a quick bite to eat and then we're going to head towards. Uh, Rainier there we are running we are incredibly in shape people Um, okay we're driving come on Uh, they're doing a a little going away I don't know something or other sending off they're buying us one-way tickets to somewhere (laughs) Astoria (laughs) they're breaking our dinner plate and our chair so uh, Oh, it's a farewell, yes. And, uh, but uh, I just, I just, you know, 
to, the service today, I, th I think the theme was is that God wants to give us freedom. Yeah. And uh, that's what Jesus is all about. Now, Leslie, I was really blessed by your testimony last night. I think you got to share that with everybody. Come on up here. Today's testimony day. My name is Leslie, and I'm grateful to God for right in eight months clean from crystal meth. I was, Amen. I was addicted to crystal meth for 23 years, and I got clean in my laundry room in California when I said, in the mighty name of Jesus, I command every unclean spirit and spirit of addiction to leave right now. And it didn't take 12 steps. It didn't take 12 minutes. It was done right then and there. Amen. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Yes. And, you know, if I had known it was a demon of addiction, I could have dealt with it a million years ago. But I didn't know any better. And so it's my purpose in life to be able to um, let other people know what when you wake up every morning and you're a slave to something you cannot see, it's a spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. So Ephesians 6.12 is what I um, uh, became aware of, and then I um, just allowed God to keep working in my life. And, and uh, you know, there was never a time that I wanted to be clean before. And, you know, that I had made that my priority. It was my number one priority. I used to get up early to, to go smoke in my garage so that I didn't bring it around my little girls because I knew that drug addicts raised drug addicts. And so there was a time when I decided that I wasn't reading and praying my, and um, I wanted to, to get time with God, but I just made excuses or it, it, life just, um, you know, overwhelmed me. And I thought, you know, I'm going to set my alarm for 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. because if I wanted to um, do drugs, I made time behind closed doors to do that. And so I started setting my alarm to be 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. and I would pray or read my Bible for 10 minutes. And, and you know that when the little, the neighbor kids would say, your alarm's going off, it's time to pray, it's time to pray, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> and when, after I was six months clean, <clears throat> I told my 13-year-old daughter that we were um, that I, that I came clean with her, and she had no idea. And so praise God that my life didn't transfer to my kids, and I broke that generational curse off of, you know, um, my family all the way back to Adam, you know, because I'm not letting my kids um, be consumed by drugs or alcohol, um, it, not on my watch. And and um, so I just appreciate every day that I have is a miracle that I don't get up and I, I don't smoke crystal meth anymore. Amen. Amen. Um, I d I've traded a dependency on drugs for, d I'm dependent on Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. We celebrate that with you. Amen. He is the pearl of great price. And you are the pearl of great price. He's the treasure in the field. It's worth selling everything. It's worth, uh, it's worth selling everything. It's worth giving up everything to get Jesus in the house. It's worth it. It's worth it. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to ask. Uh, okay, I'll do that. Um, Pastor Steve, why don't you come? And I'm going to ask Rachel to come. One, one of you stand on this side, one of you stand on the other side. You can bring Robert if you want to, if that helps you. So, um, but uh, if you want prayer today to get free from something, oh, we got to take an offering. Yeah. You need to get free of your offering. Yes. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Praise God. Don't you appreciate Greg? I tell you, this place would fall apart without him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I tell you what, I'm going to fumble on something on the piano. Um, and you come, put your offering in here. There's anointing oil under here. And uh, 
there, uh, if you want prayer, find Pastor Steve or, or Rachel and be prayed for. Okay? Amen. What he did for Leslie, he can do for you. Amen. Amen.